Hey, it's Mark from Ripple Training. So last week, as you're probably aware, Apple released Final Cut Pro 10.8. If you haven't already checked out our videos on the new features for both the Mac and the iPad versions, two separate videos, we go into great detail. You want to check those out at the links below. Now, one of the marquee new features is the enhanced light and color effect. This feature alone prompted me to update our color grading tutorial. In fact, I completely rewrote it from the ground up using entirely new footage for all the examples. I think it's the best way for you to learn how to master all the color grading tools in Final Cut Pro, and it's on sale now. Check out the link below for a full description. Today on Back Mac Studio, I'm sharing with you a free excerpt from the tutorial. Check it out and let us know what you think. Once our shots are normalized so that they have, quote, correct dynamic range of color balance, we can move to the next stage in our color grading workflow, shot matching. The purpose of matching shots is to ensure visual continuity from shot to shot to keep the viewer engaged in the story you're telling and not distracted by jarring changes in lighter color when moving between shots that are supposed to represent the same place and time. Typical reasons for these discontinuities include shooting the same scene with different cameras that have different color profiles, shooting the same scene with the same camera, but with different exposure and or white balance settings, changing lighting conditions in a scene over time, and shooting a scene in a completely different locations or times of day that are intended to represent the same location and time of day. You've already learned most of the techniques that you'll need to match shots to each other but there are a few additional tools in Final Cut Pro that make this process easier to accomplish. In the matching shots section, these first two shots are of the same subject, shot at the same time, but with two different cameras with two different color profiles. The first was a Blackmagic Ursa Mini, and the second was a Sony A7S III. Both cameras shot ProRes in log profiles based on the color science of each camera. The Blackmagic shot has a custom LUT already baked into it. As you can see, there's no LUT in the Info Inspector and no custom LUT in the Video Inspector. It has a color curves effect applied to normalize the dynamic range and has good color balance. The next shot of the same subject is also in a log profile. There are no effects applied in the video inspector and no camera light applied in the info inspector. If we play through the two clips, there's a very obvious and jarring difference between them. Before we attempt to match these shots, let's configure Final Cut Pro's comparison viewer so we can see them next to each other. From the window menu, choose Show in Workspace, Comparison Viewer, or use the keyboard shortcut, Control-Command-6. At the top of the Comparison Viewer, we can see it's in Timeline Mode, and at the bottom, in blue, that it is displaying the previous edit, which is conveniently what we want to see here. Let's use its View menu to enable the scopes for the Comparison Viewer, and match the side-by-side -side layout and the specific scopes we're using for the main viewer with the vector scope on the left and the waveform set to the RGB parade on the right. Then to make the two images larger and closer together for each viewer in the view menu, select the vertical layout to place the scopes underneath the images. We can drag between the windows to resize them to have nice large images and decently sized scopes with the inspector open. Let's save this customized layout using Window, Workspaces, Save Workspace As, and name it Matching Shots. Great, now we can recall this layout whenever we need it. Now, much like with the automatic balance color command, Final Cut Pro has an automatic match color command that can be useful if the shots are already pretty close in contrast and color balance. To demonstrate this, let's first apply the camera LUT for this shot's log profile. 
Sony S-Log3, S-Gamut3 Cine. The LUT makes this shot much more closely match the first shot. The only significant difference appears to be the shadows aren't as deep and there are some brighter highlights. Just like balanced color, to apply match color, you must annoyingly first select the clip. So let's press C to do that. And then from the enhancements menu, choose match color. Note the keyboard shortcut, Option Command M. The text at the bottom of the window tells us to skim to the frame we want to match to. So I'll skim the first clip and click on several different frames. Since there's little subject movement and no camera movement, they all yield the same result. So I'll click Apply Match. In the Video Inspector, we can toggle match color off and on and see how it's expanded the dynamic range to create deeper shadows and also increase saturation. If you don't like the result, you click the Choose button to select a different frame from the previous clip or of any other clip in the timeline. These shots match nicely now. Let's play through them. We could bring down the highlights a touch, but Match Color did a good job here on its own. OK, let's delete it from the Video Inspector, go to the Info Inspector, remove the camera LUT, and this time use the keyboard shortcut Option Command M to apply Match Color, select a frame, and click Apply Match. This time, with no LUT applied, Match Color again increased dynamic range and saturation, as we can see by toggling it off and on, but not nearly enough to match the first shot. Unlike Balance Color, which pushes hard to expand dynamic range and balance the color channels, Match Color only makes smaller adjustments and is therefore, in my opinion, only useful when the shots are already quite close. Let's delete Match Color from this clip. Assume we don't know the camera that was used and directly grade the log shot to match the first clip. Our first step is to normalize the clip. We could try Balance Color or Enhance Light and Color, but since we know we already have decent color balance by the white shirt and balanced RGB waveforms, let's use our default color wheels to expand the dynamic range by pulling down the shadows, raising the midtones and highlights, readjusting the shadows since these controls overlap, and then increase overall saturation. Now it's decently normalized, so let's try to match the first shot with an eye to matching the vector scopes, and more importantly, the skin tones of the two shots, using saturation and the midtones brightness, or gamma. With a good visual match completed, you might think you could use match color to confirm your work. Let's try. C, then Option Command M. Sample, apply match, and let's toggle it off and on. It overcorrects this time as if it's being applied before our correction. And in fact, it appears above our correction. Let's drag it below and choose a new frame to match to. And now it's having a very subtle impact, including a slight expansion in the blue channel, shifting the color balance. It's very subtle. Let's play through both our clips now. And that's much better. The takeaways for me regarding match color are these. Number one, it's only useful on clips that are close in dynamic range and color balance. Number two, it doesn't have any parameters to adjust. Number three, it can be used to confirm or improve a manual match, but it must be manually moved below the correction and resampled. So I consider it a handy tool once you understand its limitations. Let's look at these next two clips. They are the same drone shot over a forest canopy at the edge of the lake we saw earlier, shot with the same drone camera, but at different times of year, and it looks like with different exposure settings. The second shot has a color wheels correction to normalize it by opening up the midtones a little. Our goal is to make the first shot match the second, so let's change the comparison viewer to display Next Edit. The scopes tell us the same story we see in the images. The shot we want to correct has much more luminance in the middle to high midtones 
has more green cast, is indicated by the green traces missing from the deep shadows, and is quite a bit more saturated. In addition, the darker shot that we're trying to match the lighter shot to contains some yellow and even brownish foliage because it was probably shot in the fall, and that's going to be tough to match perfectly, but let's see how close we can get. You're welcome to try match color, but it won't get us there, as you may suspect from our last experience. So let's try to address these differences starting with our default color wheels corrector. First, I'll pull way down on the midtones luminance slider. Notice how you can keep going, watching both the RGB parade and the images. Then I'll back off on the global saturation to see how they're so obviously different. Then I'll attempt to regain some of the deep shadow detail by raising the shadows. And then again, adjust the midtones, checking the RGB waveforms for each image. The trees seem to match well, but the water still looks a bit too green in the clip we're correcting. Let's rename this correction to Color Wheels, Loom, and Sat. And then add a color curves correction with option E. In the blue curve, I'll drag the top control point left to better match the blue waveforms and bring more blue into the water. Then let's add a point in the middle and move it up slightly to raise the midtones. Now both the waveforms match more closely, and more importantly, the watercolor matches better. Since these shots were made on different days, the ripple patterns from the wind on the water are different, but hopefully that won't be too distracting to the viewer now that the shots match much more closely. Let's append water to the name of this corrector, and then play through both clips. For our last color matching example, we have a short series of four clips. First is a wide shot of two people fishing, then a medium close-up of our main subject from behind, then the same medium close-up from the side, and finally, a reverse angle payoff shot as he shows off the fish he caught. The third and fourth shots were taken later in the day when the sun was almost setting, making the third shot in particular look darker than the rest. Let's first normalize all these clips at once by selecting them all and pressing Smash O for Enhanced Light and Color. For the first shot, I'll adjust ELC by bringing the shadows down a bit. I'll also adjust the highlight warmth to bring down that blue channel. Then bring them all up by adjusting contrast. The second shot looks good as is. For this third shot, let's match to the second, so I'll set the comparison viewer back to previous edit. By the way, you aren't limited to comparing the current shot to the next or previous edit. At the top of the comparison viewer, I'll click Saved. Then at the bottom left, I'll click Frame Browser. Here, you can save frames from anywhere on your timeline. Simply move the playhead to the frame you want to save, I'll select a frame from the first clip and click the plus button. Then let's do the same for a frame near the end of the last clip in the sequence. You can save up to 30 frames and any corrections applied to those clips are included. I'll close the frame browser and move the playhead back over this darker clip we want to correct. I can now easily toggle the comparison viewer between timeline and saved to show either the previous or the next corrected clip. Very nice. Let's stick with the timeline clip for now. The scopes indicate similar dynamic range, color balance, and saturation between the clips. There's some brighter highlights in our working clip due to the sun being in the frame, and some more red hues in the clip we want to match to due to his shirt getting better lighting, so those differences are to be expected. Since they're similar, we can try match color using our little shuffle approach. See to select the clip if necessary, Option Command M to match color. Select a target frame. Click Apply Match. In the Video Inspector, move match color below our color adjustments corrector. Click Choose and Sample again. 
apply match, and toggle that. There's a slight color balance shift, but that's about it. Most of the difference remaining here is due simply to the fact that our subject is backlit. So now that we've taken the technical aspect of matching the shots about as far as we can, let's just try to see if we can lighten up our subject without affecting the overall dynamic range too much. Let's add normalize to the color adjustments correction. Then let's add a color wheels corrector and append the name with brighten subject. We can open up the midtones and then pull the shadows back down, expanding the darker tones in the image. Doing so starts to introduce some noise due to the shot being a little underexposed and captured in a compressed codec, so we can only go so far. This is why many shooters employ an ETTR, or exposed to the right strategy, to ensure good shadow detail, but still not blowing out the highlights. Let's toggle that off and on. We get some more light on his face and improve contrast on his shirt. You now have a full suite of tools and techniques available to you for matching your shots once they've been normalized. But so far in every case, our manipulations have affected the entire image, maybe more of a specific luminance range or color channel, but wherever that brightness or color cast is in the image, it gets changed. In these next few lessons, you'll learn some powerful techniques for what is called secondary color correction, in which we isolate a specific region and or a specific color range to manipulate. We'd love to know your thoughts. Please leave us a comment below and subscribe if you like our content. With some basic color theory knowledge and practice with the grading tools in Fonica Pro, both covered in depth in our new tutorial, there's no limit to how you can use color to support your storytelling goals. We'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.